Welcome to the Love and Lattes podcast. I would absolutely love if you would subscribe to this channel. Now grab some coffee and let's get chatting. Hey everyone, I'm Katie Cassidy from A Royal Christmas Crush. Thank you again for talking with me. I'm so excited. I have to tell you, Monte Carlo is one of my favorite movies ever. So this is Hilarious. so fun to chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. What were your thoughts when you were approached to star in a Hallmark Channel movie? Honestly, like I didn't really think too much about it. I let the script sort of in the story speak for itself. And after I read the script, I was like, who doesn't want to play a girl who's this cool architect who gets swept off her feet by a prince <laughs> and who doesn't want to shoot in an ice castle, um, which was really cool. So I read the script. I thought it was, I thought it was good. I was definitely interested and, in, you know, we, we spoke to Hallmark and, and it all sort of happened really fast. It was, um, it was really awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's such a, like a fun um, thing, especially maybe if you've done a few more like serious or like action type projects to kind of go into this very lighthearted world uh, surrounded by ice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, you gave us like a super short snippet just now when you have architect, I can't talk, architect, ice castle and royals, but can you kind of give a little more like in-depth look at like, just like the overall synopsis for the film and kind of who you play? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I play Ava Jensen, who is an American architect who her uncle and her grew up building snow castles and stuff together. And then her uncle gets hired to go work on building the royal castle for the royal family in Free Orland. And he calls me and says, I would really love your help. Can you come help me? And she agrees to. So she travels all the way to Friuland and she's there for work. You know, the prince sort of sweeps her off her feet. And I definitely don't think, you know, she was expecting that, but I definitely think that she's a breath of fresh air for him because she's not in the royal inner circle and involved in all of that. And I think it's, you know, it's this cute, beautiful love story. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm so curious, like the the name you said, Free, Free Orland, I'm sure I didn't say that right, but like, it sounds like Norwegian or like from Iceland. Where did this film? <laughs> we actually shot this in Ottawa and in Quebec and Calgary. It was really beautiful. And the ice castle was incredible. They get these architects or these sculptors to come out every year and they sculpt um, the walls of the of the ice hotel. And we basically got there at the tail end. Uh, so it was all real. And the hotel every year it melts away. And then next winter, they'll do it again. So it's sort of like this interesting idea of like it, the art exists, but only for so long. And then it becomes a puddle of water and osmosis goes through the process. Yeah, it's like nature um, an art form. That's so fascinating. So I, I imagine it was pretty chilly on set. <laughs> oh yeah, it was freezing. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fun yeah everyone looks super bundled up in like the pictures in the trailer <laughs> yeah we were uh we were definitely chilly <laughs> um it's I mean quite a feat I can imagine like you're saying for them to sculpt that what were like you thinking when you got to go on set for the first time kind of like witness like like you're saying this um temporary like almost living art yeah it was wild I mean it's just it was such a cool experience and it just was very much I mean you can see my reaction, well, Ava's reaction to the ice hotel is she's exploring it. And I really think as the audience, you get to feel, you get to feel like you're sort of stepping into this ice mansion hotel and experiencing the art. And I don't know, it's just very captivating and um, very moving. It was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it is so cool. I'm um, so fun to see on the screens. Um, and of course, this is like a Christmas in July movie, which is fun, especially if you're in a really, really hot location, you can kind of just like pretend you're somewhere where it's cold. But um, what's like your favorite part of the Christmas season? Oh, a part of the Christmas season. I, I mean, it's time to spend, you know, spending time with family and, and I love giving. I love the food and just like the holiday spirit and being with close family and friends and, you know, having gratitude and just being, being together, spending time together. Yeah. Kind of like, um, like the meaning of like the holidays more than like kind of material things. That's what makes it so much more meaningful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love, like, I think about it and I think about the lights and the Christmas trees and just like the spirit and you go, you know, we have these little shopping um, centers or like we have a little village up the street we call it and 
if they decorate it and like you get to see the kids and Santa, like the spirit is so heartwarming and so heartfelt. And yes, obviously this is a Hallmark movie and, and a feel good movie and um, a love story. So. Yes. You can never have too many of those. They're so fun. <laughs> I know. Exact, exactly. You of course got to work with Steven Hazar who just, he just had a movie come out on Hallmark movies and mysteries. Like, a month and a half, two months ago. And then here he is again and you're together and he's playing a prince, which is so fun. Do you want to talk about like working with him? Yeah, sure. He's a total pro. I didn't end up necessarily, I met him briefly a couple of days and clearly there was chemistry uh, <laughs> because I, we ended up together in real life. So I guess you could say it's sort of like a real life fairy, <laughs> fairy tale. I've never fallen for a co-star before. So it was definitely an interesting experience. He's wonderful and an incredible actor, incredible human being. Uh, very, again, very professional and very just lovely to work with and couldn't ask for anybody else to play opposite me. He was fantastic. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. Well, you know, I always feel like when two people have such great chemistry um, in roles, it's like, of course, there's something more there. So I'm so glad this opportunity proved to be a really positive one for you. Yeah. Sorry. I'm like getting a little choked up. Um, Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I know everyone's going to love this because it actually, it kicks off the Christmas and July season, which is so much fun. So um, yeah, it's the Oh gosh, 8th of July. I feel like it's, it's, is that right? Did I mess up? Yes, it's July 8th. Yeah. Okay. For some reason, maybe it's okay. It's July 8th, but it's at like seven central. That's why I was getting a seven in my head randomly. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it happens. Um, And I guess, do you have like maybe a specific scene that you are excited for everyone to see, or just like in general, like a memory from filming that you just look back on, you're like, oh, that was so nice. <laughs> um. Yes. I mean, the whole thing was so nice, but I definitely feel as though the scenes in the barn were really fun. And I remember the moment where I think the moment where Steven and I were like, we like kind of just fell into each other. Um, and then the scene at, well, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but the scene in the red dress when I show up in the red dress was really special. Oh, I was totally going to ask you. I forgot to write this down in my questions. But like when you have royal movies, there's always like this grand ball of some sort. And the the main actress gets to just dress up in some gorgeous ball gown. So I bet that was so fun for you. Yeah. <laughs> so fun. I felt like I looked like a person. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not literally. But when I saw I saw some of the, some of the film uh, when I was doing ADR and I saw that scene and I realized there's two red there's two bows next to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I look like a present. <laughs> um, but it, it was a beautiful dress and a beautiful scene. But, and again, one of my favorite. So perfect for the holidays, then just wrapped up in a nice bow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's so fun. Um, And I will start wrapping up pretty quickly. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I read that you have like your own production company and you have projects in the works. Do you want to talk about like kind of how that was formed and um, maybe some upcoming projects you can share details on? I went through the Warner Brothers director's program in 2019 and then directed my first episode of Arrow the last season. And then we finished the show and then we were the pandemic hit. Uh, but once I started directing, I was like, oh my gosh, this means like the world is my oyster. As long as I stay within the aesthetic of the show, but like I get to build the castle. Is that what you're saying? So I found this like just creative outlet and love and joy while directing. And uh, so basically when we were in lockdown, I, I wrote and shot a short as a spoof on the 2020 election a spoof on American politics. And I actually will be releasing it in 2024 around the upcoming election. So I shot and directed that. And then I wrote a pilot based off a book franchise that um, as a, yeah, and broke the series. So I'm going to be shopping that as well. But as you know, there's a writer strike happening, but it's good people stand up for their rights. So that's right. That's right. Um, hopefully a resolution will come to that soon for the Writers Guild. Um, but wow, that's amazing. Um, congratulations. Yeah, that's so cool. I can't imagine. Do you do you ever had or have you, I guess, in your career had moments where you're 
in the actor's like um, position, but you think, man, if I was the director, I might do something totally different. Yes. Oh my gosh. All the time. It's so funny you say that because I just had this conversation with an editor who's a friend of mine and he is go, he wants to direct. And so he's actually taking acting classes and we had this exact conversation, how he, as the actor learned more about directing vice versa in his acting class. And I was like, Oh my gosh, in the Warner brothers program, I learned so much more about acting, learning from a director's perspective as well. Um, but yes, now sometimes I watch what the director's doing and I'm like, there's such a good opportunity for a transition shot right here. If you could just match cut that. I mean, last night when I was watching, I'm like, they totally missed an opportunity for a great transition. But, you know, they were thinking about other things. I'm sure there's a lot on their minds and everybody has a different creative vision. And I respect that. That's right. It's kind of also why I feel like making a film or a television show is such a collaborative experience because everyone's perspective is kind of the way you view, like you're saying you would have done that differently. It just how the end result comes about, like all the people involved. It's just crazy. It's really, it's really fulfilling when you get to that, when you, when you get to create your vision and have a story, especially if you're shooting an independent movie and um, you get all the different creative types that come to the table and everyone collectively collaboratively puts this piece together and it's really it's so fun and again fulfilling and that's like where I thrive so more of that (laughs) yes absolutely I love that and of course women in film and um the like the leadership director position is amazing so I mean really congratulations that's such a cool huge step for you you. thank you so much (laughs) thank you yeah I appreciate that Oh my gosh, of course. And then I did want to ask you really quickly, you have a cool like collaboration. I don't know if any of the bracelets you have on are um, part of that, but yes. do you want to talk about like your, uh, crystal jewelry? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I met this woman and, and became friends with her out of New York and she, it's called Alma Lobo. You can check it out online. That's Alma, A-L-M-A underscore Lobo, L-O-B-O.com. All natural, all organic. And it's basically these, Um, independent companies that are female owned, um, mostly European. And I have a love for crystals. And I'm honestly, I probably 15 years ago saved my, you know, got sort of more in touch with my spiritual side and crystals and just, it saved my life and, and the energy. I mean, I have so many crystals and I love them so much and I feel really drawn to them. And this woman, same thing. And so she had also gone through a divorce. This is like Um, in the middle of the pandemic, I had just as well. And so we sort of bonded and I was like, let's, let's do a collection together or a collaboration. Like I would love to. And so she helped me pick the crystals out and we, we made this jewelry and yes, a lot of the pieces that I wear obviously are my own. (laughs) Yeah, that's amazing. I'll totally um, link that in the show notes so people can click and order and support. um, That would be great. That's awesome. That would be amazing. Oh, absolutely. Do you have a favorite crystal? Well, rose quartz. Oh, rose yeah. quartz and citrine. Citrine's creativity, and it's actually my birthstone. Um, but rose quartz is love, and I'm a number six, and that's associated with the number for love. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, there's so much meaning behind that. It's just so fascinating. Um, well, that's super cool. I have to remind everybody to watch Royal Christmas Crush on July 8th at 7 p.m. Central Time, I believe. But double check your local listings to make sure accord- according to your time zones. Um, but we'll finish up with rapid fire questions. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, what is the last show you binge watched? Binge watched. I haven't really binge watched anything oh gosh I think it, it, I don't watch that much tv yeah I know it's like you're so busy doing your thing like how do you have time to like watch tv when you're like in I that don't business watch that, much TV. <laughs> that should have just been my first answer I don't watch that much tv I haven't been watch, <laughs> watched anything that's perfectly fine um what's your favorite ice cream flavor mint chocolate chip <laughs> such a popular answer um do you have a go-to coffee drink Americana Oh yeah. And uh favorite rom-com? Favorite rom-com. How to lose a man in 10 days. Yes. Classic. And finally, where is a place that you would like to visit that you had not yet traveled to? I really want to go to Ireland. I'm Irish. Oh, wow. Yeah. You should totally go. That's the end of the yeah. rapid fire questions, but I encourage you to visit Ireland. I've never been, but my gosh, it's beautiful. 
Yeah, it looks really beautiful. I'd love to go there. It really does. And all the history and the castles. I mean, what more could you want? <laughs> exactly, right? It's a uh, dream. Um, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, thank you again for chatting with me, but I really appreciate your time. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of all the new episodes. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much for listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Have a great day. Thank you.